Welcome back and in this video of part two we will take a very simple and straightforward example to determine the internal loadings at a required distance along a beam. Okay, uh, here we have a typical first floor layout in a double story dwelling and we have highlighted here beams B1 and B2 to look at. Now, uh, what are we seeing here? B1 is say a typical timber beam and B2 is a steel beam and uh, there's a bulkhead under B2. The floor joists are running up and down the page at 400 millimeters deep. For this example, um, we were asked to calculate the internal loads of beam B1 at 1500 millimeters from B2. Right, uh, let's copy the layout here again and on the right side here we have uh, the beam model of B1 as a simply supported beam carrying a UDL uh, and it is pinned at A and there is a roller at B. Generally the first step is to determine the external UDL on B1. We are given a floor load width of 8500 millimeters divided by 2 which is basically 4.25 meters. We are given a total dead load of 4 kilonewton meter and that is the dead load of the floor, the self weight of the beam and upper wall loads. We are given a total live load of 6.375 kilonewton meters which is simply 1.5 kPa multiplied by the floor load width of 4.25 meters. And then W star is equal to the loading combination of 1.2 dead plus 1.5 live so that's 1.2 times 4 plus 1.5 multiplied by 6.375 and that is 14.35 kilonewton meters. The second step is to work out the external reactions FXA, FYA and FYB. The external sign convention um, that we will take in this case is up as positive, down as negative, left as negative, right positive, moment anti-clockwise is positive which causes compression at the top of the beam and clockwise as negative. I think this is a very important step when designing beams it is a good practice to draw it next to you so that you do not forget it. Okay, uh, let's now work out the reactions. So I will take some of moments at A equals zero. So that will be minus 54.53, uh, which is going down, and that's why it's negative. Multiplied by 1.9, the lever arm is 1.9, plus FYB, and FYB is positive, that's going up, okay? multiplied by the lever arm of 3.8 and therefore FYB is 27.265 kilonewton. And the answer here turned out to be positive which just means that the sign convention FYB going up is correct. Take now sum of forces in the y direction equal to zero. Therefore we have FYA going up minus 54.53 that's going down plus 27.265 which is going up that's FYB equal to zero okay FYA then is equal to 27.265 kilonewton. Sum of forces in the X is equal to zero and therefore FXA is equal to zero. Uh, we don't have any external horizontal forces in this case. Okay so therefore the maximum shear force is 27.265 kilonewton and the maximum bending moment is WL squared over 8 which is 14.35 times 3.8 squares divided by 8 and that is 25.9 kilonewton meters. Uh, the third step is a good habit and practice to draw the bending moment and shear force diagram. As you can see below that the uh, maximum shear force is at the end of the beam and the maximum moment is at the mid span. VI and MI are the internal forces that we want to work out at 1500 millimeters from support A. 
so then we can the fourth step is basically do a cut and we will take a free body diagram around the area that we want to determine the internal stresses in this case uh, which is 1500 millimeters um, if we take the free body diagram and we look at the left side of the cut we will see a shear force downwards moment anti-clockwise and the normal force tension outwards to the right and that will be our positive internal forces sign convention so uh, here basically we have three unknowns which is MI, NI and VI and of course we have three equations of equilibrium so the problem is statically determined take uh, some of uh, now now it's time to work out the internal forces so we can take the sum of moment around the cut is equal to zero and that will be minus 27.265 and multiplied by the lever arm of 1.5 why is that minus because we are going clockwise okay and we've assumed that in, as a minus sign convention and then we add 21.525 multiplied by 0.75 and that is positive because it's going anti uh, anti-clockwise plus mi mi is going anti-clockwise and that's why we said plus all of that is equal to zero therefore the internal moment mi is 24.75 kilonewton meters and the answer again turned out to be positive which means the anti-clockwise direction is correct of what we have assumed now we will take sum of forces in the y is equal to zero uh, we have 27.265 going up minus 21.525 minus vi therefore vi is equal to 5.74 kilonewton and that the sign convention again is correct so vi internally is downwards sum of forces in the x is equal to zero uh, therefore ni the normal the normal force is equal to zero okay and now uh, then i think it's uh, again it's a good practice to redraw the bending moment and shear force showing the results of the internal forces that we calculated um, the diagram here gives us a good indication of the values of the internal forces in respect to the length of the beam and you can see here at uh, the VI here is 5.74 um, and then towards the center of the beam we have zero shear force and likewise in the moment diagram is 24.75 at 1.5 meters and then the maximum moment is 25.9 so we can appreciate here where we are looking at when it comes to calculating internal forces. The uh, final step, of course, we can evaluate the internal stresses that are at this location and where we have the shear stress, uh, which is equal to the, the formula VQ over IB. Um, or some textbooks they have it as I which is the moment of inertia multiplied by T then uh, where V in this case is um, the internal shear force VI that we calculated before and then we have the bending stresses which is minus one MY over I and M in this case is the internal moment MI and finally the normal stress um, but in this case the normal stress is zero if we had any external uh, horizontal forces then it will just be n uh, divided by the area the cross-sectional area which is b times d yeah uh, in the next video part three we will quickly go through the uh, internal loadings in b and b2 um, as for now, we hope you enjoyed this video and um, if you have found it helpful, please subscribe and share so that others may benefit as well. I want to thank you for watching and have a great afternoon.